Hi, I'm uh, Danny Vecchioni. I'm a Brooklyn-based uh, cinematographer, and I shoot documentary work, narrative work, which I guess this film is a combination of those two things. My name is Diego Angaro. I am the writer and director of Down with the King. I am a French director. I'm based in um, a rural part of Connecticut. I direct mostly feature films. So Down with the King is about Money Merck, who's a famous rapper from New York. And he is sent by his manager to a country house in rural Massachusetts to work on a new album. And he's at a crossroad in his career where he, in his life, where he wonders if he wants to keep doing what he's been doing. And instead of working on his music, he spends most of his time at his next door neighbor's farm, learning about farming. This idea sprouted in actually in 2015. So Danny, Rob and I made a first, my first feature together, uh, which was shot in the same area. So we shot that in um, Western Massachusetts in the Berkshires in uh, 2014. It's about the specific logger in Massachusetts that was in his 60s and who has his soft butts for, uh, for golf and gex rap. Anyway, we finished making that film and that's the community I've been living in for 15 years now. And I really wanted to tell another story set in that little rural puck out of America. And this time I wanted to have like a an outsider character, but I just wasn't sure who that would be. I've always been a, a big fan of, uh, of hip hop music growing up. I remember reading a specific interview of a very famous French rapper, whose name is uh, Oral San. Then he was honestly talking about how much pressure he felt on his shoulder and how difficult for him it was to write a second album where he was completely depressed and had suicidal tendencies. And it was really surprising to read that because rap is such a, a man's world where you have to show your muscles and, and really don't show your witnesses and, and and that kind of resonated with me. So when I wanted to make that other film set in that same logging and farming community, I mean, the outsider would be, was obvious that to me that it would be, uh, would be a rapper that we would kind of parachute in this area. So Freddie came in um, through the process late, later on. I remember seeing one of his music video called uh, Crime Pace, uh, where he's just hanging out on a zebra farm somewhere in Wyoming and it's a really good music video. He has like a comedy bit in the middle of the, um, the video for like two minutes where he just riffs off. I mean, I was laughing so hard, but also I was really impressed by this person's charisma and, and also his music. It became clear that he probably was the character or the, the actor slash character I was looking for because I was really interested to work with a real rapper. There was no auditions, there was no, okay, we're gonna rehearse a scene together. You need like an, an insane amount of confidence and trust going into the whole production with someone you, you've never seen act before. But Freddie's a natural. I mean, he surprises so many times, you know, just nailing things on the first takes. A lot of the film was improvised as far as dialogues. He was able to become vulnerable and trust me as much as I trusted him. And, and so we built on that. So we had two Blackmagic Pocket Camera 6Ks. The US first film we shot on Blackmagic Pocket uh, Cameras, the first version, the first itineration of those. Those are tiny. Those are like slightly bigger than iPhones. Diego really, the way he thinks about film and the way he, he wants to approach it is not a production heavy scenario. He wants a very, very light footprint, very, very small crew. I really got stuck on wanting to shoot anamorphic and trying to sort of retrofit anamorphic, which doesn't really go with running the gun, was a little bit tricky. But um, after some testing and seeing some sort of like everything from like very cam, which just was going to be too big and too cumbersome and stuff like that, to like a, you know, A7S II, which turned out to be just it wasn't going to work out. We settled on the Black Magic because it does have an EF mount and, and a 3.2K anamorphic mode that we could then use the Atlas Orion's uh, lenses on, basically. I had just shot with the Atlas Orion's, uh, it was like a series of five videos for uh, Mini Cooper in um, Munich and Oxford. We were using the Atlas a combination actually of Atlas and Cooks on that project. It was really through discussions with Diego because we were like, we wanted to have this very extremely naturalistic approach the way he had in his first film. But we wanted Money Merc as a character is like a superstar rapper in the film. And Freddie's a you know big deal in the hip hop world, but we wanted to have something visually that would signify luxury and this high end sort of visual feeling as well as capturing this in a, in a direct cinema way. And I was trying, it was just trying to 
having a thought process of like, how do you make something slick and run and gun? And, and I really thought the anamorphic lenses would lend themselves to like his character really. So we ended up sort of doing testing and testing. It was a little bit of a confusing rig at first because we were, the A camera was not working for the first three days, not because of the lenses, but it was like power distribution and cable issues that we got worked out. And as soon as it started kind of going, we, we started really being able to go quite fast. We basically had the whole thing on easy rigs or tripods on long lenses and stuff like that too. When you see the film, there's a concert scene at the end of the film. And we were on a, you know, we were on a very tight budget. We didn't have any Genie crew. It was just like two ACs, a downloader, myself and another camera operator. But we had to make this concert feel enormous. We basically shot that scene at Mass Mocha on the stage there. And the anamorphic lenses just allowed us to have like a hazer up. The anamorphic would just shred the light just beautifully and just up the production value just enormously. So I think it was basically the anamorphic lenses made the concert scene really what it is too. It just makes it feel huge. And we had the full six frame set. So we had two cameras shooting almost all the time and we would mismatch the lenses. So we would shoot a lot. We didn't shoot a lot on the 32 or 40. We were trying for a longer lens thing. So we were trying to kind of go 50 and up. You know, there's some establishing shots that we have on the 32 or something like that but I was really trying to go on a little bit of a longer lens kind of vibe. But we shot on the 65 a ton and the 100 a lot. I, I shot on the 100 quite a bit too. I think the lenses were kind of doing a lot of my work for me on the, on the style of the film. But the film is extremely, I would say it's like aggressively naturalistic is sort of the, the term I feel like we've been using. We wanted it to be real. Like everything should feel real and beautiful, which is hard because you don't know where the character is going to move. But we would sort of piecemeal out the house we were shooting in. And the house we shot in was gorgeous and stuff too. But we knew where the sun was going to be going every day. And it was a really wonderful like location. And there was tons of practicals on them, tons of dimmers and stuff like that too. But just really using the natural light to our, our advantage, the locations to our advantage, and then really just crunching down on the, the gear that we had. So Down with the King is set in the same town, very small town in Massachusetts called Sandusfield, for the most part. We shot, I'd say, you know, 90% of the film there. And a lot of it takes place on this rented house that Money Mark is staying on. And then there's the farm. And Diego had lived there previously in the town when we shot Bob in the Trees. So we had some familiarity with it. The, the house was new. It was really kind of great because it's not like a shot listed type movie. It's more of like reacting, it's more of like a cinema verite or direct cinema type approach to things where you're trying to take in what's happening. And the way Diego writes, he and his writing partner, uh, Shabi, it's more of an outline with like, there's a, a line of dialogue here, line of dialogue there. And there's the whole story's there, but you don't really know what's gonna kind of happen. So while we didn't shot list it, we, we stayed in the house the week prior to shooting. And we would just sit there and talk about the movie and how you know we would approach each scene, accomplish each each kind of thing. I was doing like light studies as we were, <laughs> you know, as we were kind of talking about the stuff and just si kind of seeing how things were playing out through the day and kind of were able to be kind of inspired by the environment and stuff like that too. The first screen grab that I picked is Manny Merck really meet on his porch at dusk. I mean, to me, this is everything that I dreamt of writing this movie ahead of time. This clash of those two worlds uh, colliding, basically. The rapper, the famous rapper in the fur coat in the middle of this uh, just natural beauty. You feel he can be inspired on that shot and he's thinking this could be a beautiful moment, but at the same time, he could be totally lost, which is what this film is about. And you know, it's a, it's a magic hour. We shot a lot at magic hour, post magic hour. I think that was the 50 mil lens. We, we definitely got post magic hour into the blue light. So we would just try to grab something in that like really beautiful blue indigo gloaming light. And it was a really just a nice scene. It was like, he's grilling a steak in an outside pit and the orange light is lighting up his, his face in the front of him. I try not to open up to a two or open up any anamorphic lens wide open, but I did find that the Atlas Orion's did perform very well wide open in certain instances, especially like what like we're talking about this the scene with the blue light. We could really crank it so we could put the camera at uh, 3200 ISO and then it opened up to a, a, uh, a two. So we're able to take extremely dark scenes and shoot them with available light with anamorphics. So the second frame would be the one of uh, Money Merck sitting in his little study and working on his music. I mean, to me, this is, again, something I was really excited in. I like contrast, you know, you have this rapper sitting in this very ornate 
uh, setting and just having that in his image, I mean, to me is, is very rich. It's very interesting. Also, you have Freddie Gibbs in front of you, who's this incredible rapper. When we shot that scene, it's it's one of these scenes that's very documented. He's going to be writing a song and, and I just want to witness the process. And so we're going to film that. So we're going to have these very long takes. And, and we were in this very very tight space with natural light and i i just loved it it was it was it was wonderful he's supposed to be uh working all night into the early morning we didn't do really much any any lighting we did black out a couple of scenes so we had a lot of dubitine and solids kind of blacking out the room a little bit and it's supposed to look just like this very early morning very kind of lights just starting to kind of seep into the room a little bit and he has been working all night and then kind of comes up with this with this track basically but yeah that was incredible because i think he was rapping for a while and then you got to see this explosion of a song kind of come out of freddie and it's like these it was kind of amazing just watching somebody's creative process because i'd never seen somebody write a song in front of me so we were all waiting around for for you know 40 minutes and then he kind of popped out with this amazing riff and it was it was kind of great i mean a lot of them, it's it's a lot of it's about watching someone's struggling with their creative process and it's something that i can you know on a personal level relate to as well but it was just amazing to see somebody do it in real time i think we made a film that's very original and genuine and off the time without being made to be off the time, just I think it touches to a lot of things that people can struggle with. I think it's something pretty deep, but it's it's also a film that's very funny. I mean, there's a the comedic relief of fish out of the water. The rapper in the countryside is also something we we play with a lot in the film, and I, I think it's 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 a, it's a true comedy, but without being too too much of a comedy. I mean, I think I think. Uh, you'll eventually be moved. For me personally, it was, it was nice. I mean, I think that both the Diego's films have been received and have done really nice festival work and Bob and the Trees is nice to go to Sundance and then this one in the S section at, at Cannes. And for me personally, I've, I've, shot, I've shot a bunch of features at this point, but I feel like this one I just really connect to on a personal level and and really like. Like I would, I would watch this if I didn't shoot it and enjoy it. There's something very original about it that I, I've never really seen in another movie. I think there's a, there's a couple scenes in there that I just have never seen before, which is which is nice. You know, it's after you watch you know 2,000 movies, it's nice to be like, oh, that's that's new. <laughs> this is something different. And this is this is something that, that it's refreshing. It's nice. It's nice to see that. And I think it's it's also like a cool, patient, sort of accessible art film that it might feel slow to certain people and things like that. But I think it's a good movie and it's a grown up movie for grown ups. And I feel like that there's a, a missing. Uh, uh, piece of that in, in, in a lot of movies. Uh, there's a gap in, in, in movie going that for most movies made today that this is sort of filling. So I hope it finds its audience and I hope people, you know, the, I think it's definitely an audience to this and people who like it will really, really like it. So I hope it, it, it finds its way to that. I really love these lessons too, like in, in you know, is using them. I use, I use them a ton on commercial stuff and things like that too, but I think you guys are doing a really good job on them. I think it's kind of an amazing form factor and I think they're also just pretty. I just like looking at the lenses because my favorite color combination is like white, orange, and a little bit of red. <laughs> so every time I see it, I'm like, that's a nice, it's a nice looking lens. <laughs> 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 I don't care what it actually shoots, but the, looking at the lens physically is good. <laughs>